I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Murray Davidson, former fire chief of Ladysmith and a longtime official with McMillan Blodell. Welcome to the show, Murray. Well, thank you for having me, Jim. The issue that we're talking about is the non-use of one of the world's best pieces of firefighting equipment, the giant Mars water bomber. Sure, it was built 70 years ago, but this monster, until the jumbo jet was invented, was the largest flying aircraft in the world. And in one drop, it can put out four acres of fire, two and a half hectares. This is a monster aircraft skillfully flown, and if you think it's old technology up there, it has what they call an artificial cockpit, where if you look at the the windscreen, they have computers and so on, that even in heavy smoke or in the middle of the night, they have an artificial horizon uh, that shows in virtual reality what's out there. So they can fly in any kind of conditions, other conditions that ground aircraft. So far in Canada, the fire in Fort McMurray is now double the size it was when it threatened the city of 80,000 people. It forced the evacuation of 88,000 people, nearly burned down the oil fields there, the production facilities. This fire is still raging. Meanwhile, in the rest of Canada, there's a major fire burning on the border of Ontario and Manitoba. B.C.'s north has seen a number of major forest fires that have forced the evacuations of thousands of people. Yet this very precise, very large piece of equipment is sitting idle on a lake in Port Alberni. Murray, you've seen the Mars water bomber in action, haven't you? I have. What's yes, your impression uh, of it? I worked underneath it uh, quite a few times. What's your feeling when you see that giant red and white plane thunder overhead? Well, you know, Jim, having that piece of equipment uh, in the, in the case of, of a major fire, it's like having an ace in the hole. Uh, you know, when you've got uh, firefighters on the ground and they're working against time as well as the weather, it's nice to know that if needed, that uh, that monster is available to you. And the, uh, it, all it takes is, is the word from, uh, uh, like in my case, it was a, a logging manager to give the word and that plane was on its way, you know? Right. And how effective was it once it got on a fire? Well, I, it, it's really hard to describe because when the, the force of that water, when it hits the, when it hits the, uh, forest, it, it just blows everything. It's like a, a tornado goes through there, you know? Right, but I mean, it's a good tornado. Oh yeah, it, it's it's nice to see. Well, when I was covering the Burns Bog fire several years ago in Delta, that fire had been burning underground for about three months, and they thought this thing could go on for years. Once they brought the Mars water bomber in, I think it was out in three to seven days. Yeah, uh, and I I can believe that. And you know there are areas that uh you know we have opportunities we had uh i think just last year they had a uh, a har- a huge um fire out in the fields out in the farmland in the uh, cedar area on the island here and uh they could have used that plane uh time and time again out there it would have it would have cut down the extinguishing time uh by who knows quite a bit Wayne Colson who owns Colson Air Tankers he says this aircraft is best at suppressing a forest fire when it first starts because of its extensive coverage. Mm-hmm. Why not get a fire before it becomes something that's larger than the city of Calgary, or now four times the size of Calgary? Do, do you feel frustrated when a piece of equipment that's so valuable is just sitting there idle? Well, it's very, very frustrating, and... and and you know, and I think the firefighters that you could talk to any firefighter that's worked underneath that uh, particular piece of equipment, 
um, and they'll tell you the same story. Where is that plane at? You know, we need to have that plane. And it just, it's like nobody's listening. Murray, no, I'll, I'll tell you this. The reason the firefighters aren't talking to me is they're under gag orders not to speak to the media about the need for the Mars water bomber or they'll be fired. Yeah, I could, I could totally believe that. Do you think, uh, you know, with the way our weather's going, uh, Jim, in the last, in the last, as you well, you're well aware, our weather is, is we're getting into drought circum, er, situations here. And, uh, who knows what's going to happen here in the island? I mean, we're so mainly forest land. Uh, anything can happen here. And it, we could just end up being another Fort Mac. Gary Mason of the Globe and Mail did an excellent, ex- excellent article. The U.S. Forestry Service has been predicting for several years now that our forest fire seasons are getting longer, they're starting earlier, and they're burning more and more forest. So obviously, if you can have the best tools in the world available to you, why not use them? Uh, that is true. Totally true. And, and like you say, our, our uh, fire seasons now, I mean, our fire seasons used to be, uh, you know, maybe the last week of June, July, and August. But now you're looking, they're starting in April and May, and they're going right till, till the end of October, and, some, and sometimes into November. That's a long season. Yes, That's for all the people who, who deny that the, the climate is changing, I don't care what caused the climate change. It's yeah. a fact. It's here. We and, still have to deal with it. Exactly. And, and to have this thing here, Wayne Colson was saying, for example, when he was fighting forest fires in Mexico, they had to bring in the Mars because they were using these little 800 gallon single engine firefighting airplanes. Well, their load would literally evaporate before it got anywhere near the fire. Whereas with the Mars, with its massive drop, it's the equivalent of 10 fully filled fire truck tankers. Uh, it was very effective in coating these things and knocking down fires. Yeah. H- have you actually seen the difference between using a little firefighting airplane and that large monster oh for for sure i mean it, it it's like it cuts a time element in half and you know i mean we had i had an incident uh just north of here oh probably maybe maybe seven years ago now and and it was work uh, we had a, a working fire and it was uh just off the side of the road and it was it was it was endangering some houses uh had there been a, a wind change and um we managed to persuade that the our manager at the time he he called in the bomber and I think he, I think about uh, he made two trips and that fire and that put us right into a mop up stage right off the bat and it it I think those people that were living in that area were almost ready to start you know packing bags and getting ready to to leave but uh, it just what it can do is amazing and those those people that operate those planes are they're amazing people they really are. Yes, uh, fewer people uh, are astronauts that know how to run the Mars mm-hmm. water bomber. Now, of course, you said two trips it had it out. The cost of running this thing is $20,000 an hour, mm-hmm. and that sounds like a lot of money, but that's what you would pay two lawyers to work for you, you know, at you know for one day. Yeah, totally. And uh, how cheap would it be if you think about how many homes were lost in Fort Mac, if it could cover four acres at a time? I would imagine maybe six or seven drops would cover their downtown. I would think so, yeah. Um, you know, and really at the end of the day, um, is it is it much cheaper than having three or four of the uh, smaller planes uh, have because they have to go back to Abbotsford to to load up with retardant again? Uh, by the time they get over there, get fueled up and loaded up with retardant again, and the cost of the retardant has to be factored in there somewhere when you're loading up the Mars. Uh, there's all the water out in the bay that we need here. And uh, I know the Premier of Alberta said one of the reasons they didn't use the Mars was that there weren't any suitable bodies of water nearby. Mm-hmm. It has a range of 3,000 miles. Mm-hmm. I, I think it could find water somewhere. I would think so. And if you take a look at a map, Fort McMurray is surrounded by rivers and lakes. Yeah. Totally. Do you think taxpayers are the ones who are the big losers here? because we're spending literally millions of dollars to fight these fires every day, when in reality, this big beast could put them out before they really get started. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I and I think the taxpayers are the ones that are losing out. Um, like I said, uh, the Mars the Mars can do the same job as the small planes, but the small planes cannot do the same job as, as the Mars. That's putting it pretty bluntly. Pretty I was going to say it's sort of like uh, training a garden hose on a house fire, and then a, a regular fire truck shows up. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Is you can put a, the same amount of water on with that little hose, but again, because it's not massive enough, it just doesn't do the job. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly it. Do you um, think there should be more pressure from citizens to get the politicians to pay attention to the Mars? Well, that's my feeling, Jim, and and I, and I talk to a lot of people, ex firefighters, and and just the ordinary Joes on the street, and they're they're all for having that plane. I mean, they they don't want to see it go. Um, it's amazing when you when you see that plane flying by and, and and going over top of your head, coming in at a low elevation. People just stop and they gawk. They look at it. You know, like it's amazing, and it, it's its work is just as amazing as it looks. So I really think that that it it needs to be brought back, and I think that uh, Mr. Colson needs to have a contract to. To run that thing because if we don't, I think we're we're uh, putting ourselves in dire straits here. When I was covering the the Delta Bog fire, I saw firefighters cheer when it flew in. Yeah, well, like I said, it, it's it's like having an ace in your pocket, you know. We'll have more with Murray Davidson right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with former Ladysmith Fire Chief Murray Davidson. The issue, why aren't the governments of Canada using the Mars water bomber, the world's largest flying air tanker? It can put out four acres of forest fire at a time. And they find all kinds of excuses not to use this aircraft. And yet I'm told it's in pristine shape. Because it doesn't use landing gear, it lands and takes off on water. It doesn't have the stress on the aircraft's body that a regular airplane would have. So its age of 70 years is not a factor. Meanwhile, inside the airplane, you have the world's most modern avionics. It can fly at night. You can fly in heavy smoke and deliver a load precisely. Now, Murray, were you ever worried that when this thing was flying overhead that it would drop water on you and perhaps injure you or kill you? Well, Jim, the the uh, the the plane that that covers the uh, like it leads the Mars bomber in it it usually is in ground uh, contact radio contact with the ground crews, and once it uh, once it starts its final approach to coming into the drop zone, they will let the they usually give the ground crews time enough to to get out of the zone, and uh, and they're, of course they're well aware that it's coming, so they're they're. They're they're always on the on the watch, you know. So they're well aware of what's happening. And you have a lot more respect than fear for it. Oh, for sure. Like I mean, it it'll take down trees and and just that water just blows everything right over. It just hits with such force, you know. Makes its own fire guard. Oh yeah. Now twenty grand an hour, as we discussed earlier, doesn't. You know, it sounds like a lot of money. They think the Fort Mac fire is going to cost us between six and nine billion dollars in insurance claims. And we're not saying that the Mars could have put it out. We're, what we're saying though, it could have been a major factor in protecting vital infrastructure. If it was a power station or a fire station, things like that. Yeah. The, you know, you want to get that, you want to get this, uh, this plane working as soon as you can. Like the longer longer you wait to to bring it in to to start working on a fire, it it just it makes it harder and harder, and it takes longer and longer to to get things under control again. You know, um, that's why it's nice when you can you have you have your initial attack crews hit a fire and uh, do their size up, and if it's if it's looking like it's 
going to turn into a bad situation, that's when you have to uh, make the move to get that plane on in the air and fly into in your direction. Now, Wayne believes uh, the owner of the Mars, he believes one of the reasons why Vancouver Island hasn't had a uh, major forest fire for years is because it was available to instantly down hot spots so that they didn't become a major blaze. But now there looks like there's a real reluctance on the part of government to use it. Are you worried about your home, your neighbor's homes on the island? Well, and that's another issue. And the fire departments are all, are heavily involved in the in urban interface fires, and that you know that's the housing that's being developed up in the in the in the forest, you know, and it's always a problem. And we need to in that sort of situation. You, the Mars is a perfect candidate for for fighting that fire. And it once that starts going in the in the interface areas, you're you know you're into some big troubles. Right, you can ask the people of Kelowna what that's like. Exactly, and that's exactly what happened in Kelowna. Now, of course, the government's put together reports, said we need more fire breaks. Have you seen those fire breaks built? Mm, well, it's been some time since I've been out on the, on the fire ground, but uh, I, I don't believe so. And so that danger still exists. And what's more, here in the lower mainland, we do live in the rainforest, and you can view the area from the air or, or say, from SkyTrain, and you realize how heavily forested uh, just an urban area like Vancouver is yeah. and, and how a fire like that could get out of control. And I know that they have a big fear that perhaps a homeless person or somebody else with a discarded cigarette could start a major blaze in Stanley Park as well. Yeah, uh, most definitely. Like North Van is a perfect situation in that area. Right, uh, North Vancouver, if people are listening from outside the Vancouver area, Yes, it's uh, North Vancouver, West Vancouver are built on a mountainside. And on mm-hmm. the other side of that mountain is nothing but wilderness for thousands of miles. Yeah. So a, a fire that started, say, quite some distance away from Vancouver could burn into this area. Yeah, and and, and that, that area is a perfect location for a Mars to be working in. Is it a myth that it can't work in heavily mountainous area? I, I, I suppose that maybe there is some areas that it may have some difficulty, but you got to remember these pilots are professional people. They're used to getting into tight spots with that big plane, and yeah, I mean it, it's it's amazing to watch them. It really is, and and uh, I have full confidence in in any spot with those people. Well, perhaps if provincial governments aren't willing to contract the Mars. Should this maybe be a federal call here? Justin Trudeau likes to put his finger into everything. Why not have this thing on beck and call of the federal government to help out anywhere in the country? It certainly would help. And it would save a lot of money in the long run, wouldn't it? Totally. And just for the peace of mind for the firefighters and the citizens, again, you have no idea what it's like when you see something that's almost the size of a 747 thunder in and precisely put its load in did you ever worry that it was going to drop in the wrong area um well it it does periodically happen that they they you know they they're tar- they're off their target a little bit but i'll tell you it's very very seldom though like i said getting back to the statement those people are are very professional and usually when they put that load down it's uh, it's going where they want it wayne colson the owner of the marsh told me the only assignment it has so far this year is the Oshkosh Air Show in Wisconsin, the world's largest air show where 500 to 700,000 people come out. And he says if it's not contracted out to some government to for- fight forest fires, it's going to become a very expensive museum piece, a museum piece that works as well today as it did 70 years ago. Hmm. And, my, and my thoughts on that is that uh, that's totally ridiculous. When you have a piece of equipment like that, it's as useful as it is. It it uh, it should be working, plain and simple. Do you fear that some kind of politics might be keeping it? I can't say grounded, floated. <laughs> yeah, I, I I guess, like I said, I, I'm fairly new to the to the the uh, the program here, but I, I that's my thoughts. I've always had that thought. And why would somebody want to keep it grounded? Um, I don't. It's, I don't. I'm not really sure, Jim. I couldn't really say for sure. 
Because, you know, like I said, I, I'm fairly new and I don't know uh, too much information about that. Defies logic, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Murray, do you have any other thoughts about this subject? I, you know, I, I really hope that the people of, of, especially Vancouver Island and all of BC are listening and, and really take to heart this thought of, of keeping this plane in service because, uh, in my estimation, we need to be building a bigger fleet of these planes, not not putting it up on a stand in a museum somewhere. Uh, on the coast, especially in British Columbia, where we're, we're living in in uh, in probably eighty percent forest lands, uh, we need to have it. Especially, you know, the way the weather's going, we're we're getting into drought situations all over the place. Uh, we need pieces of equipment like this, and like I said, it's it's like an ace in the in the pocket for us. Yeah, and you've seen how those little firefighting airplanes, if it's a big fire, are totally ineffective. Yes, oh, totally. Like, like I said, the Mars, the Mars can do the same job as the small planes, but the small planes cannot do the same job as the Mars. Here, uh, somebody's gonna uh, wake wake that lady up down there, but she just she doesn't seem to have her head in the right place at times. I, I, and I thought after what happened in Kelowna, I thought you know maybe. Maybe these people are going to sit back and say, "Oh my God, you know what's happening here? We need to, we need to have a look at this and change some some issues here." But nothing's changed, absolutely nothing. Murray, thank you very much for chatting with us. You're very welcome, and uh, call me back if you ever need my opinion again. <laughs> I certainly will. Okay. My guest has been Murray Davidson, former fire chief of Ladysmith and a former official with Macmillan Blowdell. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Comments or questions for our show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. And check out our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.